Hi guys, it's Bella Irenata and for today I have a bit a grungy page for you today inspired by the beautiful papers from Stamperia. I hope I made you curious and that you will stay with me for this video. So this page is gonna be quite large and I am creating it in the Art by Marlene, the artist size journal. This is a perhaps a bit challenging format for me, but uh, luckily Stamperia has these uh, beautiful paper pads with really big focal images. Anyway, let's start. To break the white page, I decided to use uh, rice paper from Juggles. This is the white school collage number three. I will leave the link for it in the description box down below because I think it's a really gorgeous rice paper. Sadly, as you will perhaps notice later on, I will cover it a tad too much. But I still think uh, using rice paper is really a good way to break that white background. Now, after adhering the rice paper using matte medium, I needed to push it back a bit. And for that, I am using uh, white gesso. If you are worried that you will cover the designs on your rice paper too much, you could uh, choose more translucent acrylic colors. As you will see, I will use uh, opaque ones, even though I will dilute them to help the effect a bit. Or you can go with entirely different mediums, like watercolors or pigment powders. Honestly, whatever you feel like working with. I'm just trying to say that this is something to be mindful of. And if you are wondering why am I covering these beautiful designs, in my opinion, if the background is too noisy or if the pattern is too vivid or too bold, that uh, creates a really busy page in which uh, the focal image can kind of get uh, blended in with the background. And that is not something we should go for. Now, here you can see I have chosen two really beautiful uh, acrylic paints. These are from Paper Artsy, Fresco Finish, and the colors are Caribbean Sea and Smurf. And as I mentioned, they are both uh, opaque colors, so I'm using a lot of water to dilute them. Now, here I made one mistake. I didn't dry my gesso well enough, so soon you will notice, I will show you, I uh, <laughs> reactivated my gesso with this much water and it will create a really interesting texture. That was definitely not something that I was going for, but I will show you a way how to turn these little mistakes into your own advantages and how I will use it to make a really fun interest on my page. Also, one thing that you might have noticed, at the beginning, I was applying the paint in every possible direction, but later on I tried to fix that and I am uh, making strokes, uh, only vertical strokes, because I think that actually looks much nicer. Now, here it is dried. Here I will try to show you a little weird textures that have been created by me not drying my gesso properly, but oh well. Now. Santa Claus, or my husband, was really generous uh, this Christmas and I have uh, got these beautiful oil pastels. The idea was my husband to motivate me to paint more, but I decided to first test a bit these oil pastels on a mixed media piece because honestly I have never really worked with them before. So let's test them out together. They are really beautiful and creamy and as you can see they are really easy to blend with just my finger. Now of course if you don't have oil pastels there are other ways to do this. You can again use acrylic paints, you can use colored pencils, watercolors or inks. I usually reach for distress oxides in these kind of situations. But for the sake of demonstration and testing, I will uh, make all fun effects with uh, only oil pastels. Now first, I decided to take a deep, uh, rich brown uh, tone and go all over the edges of my paper. I think it already started to look pretty. 
But now let's go back a step. These fun textures that I have created inspire me to add some more texture and I will use a structure paste which is like a fine sand with this uh, stencil from Joggles. This one is uh, called Irregular Grid Mask and it uh, looks really beautiful and grungy and I thought it works really great for this project. Also one thing that I was testing in uh, this page is using this uh, kitchen tool for applying all sorts of mediums. I don't know why, I saw it somewhere and I thought okay let's give it a go, let's try how it works because you don't actually need to have all those fancy tools for creating uh, beautiful pages. Anyway, hopefully you can see how this has really nice sandy texture, this uh, texture paste that I'm using, and I am applying it uh, randomly all over the page. Now, while I did want the texture to have, I didn't want it to be uh, too bulky, so I am applying it in uh, quite a thin layer. This uh, helped to somewhat uh, blend in, but also cover those weird little textures which have been created by me not drying my gesso properly. Of course I left this to dry a bit and here is the result. I think the texture is really really nice, I like how it really feels good under the finger. But now let's go back to my oil pastels. The, all the colors that I have been using for this page are inspired by the focal image that I'm going to use. I had them on my side to always look back for reference. Oh, just on the side note, look how beautifully you can remove the oiled pastel with just a wet tissue if you don't like how it looks somewhere. Anyway, uh, back to my focal image. Uh, sometimes it helps when you create your background with a certain focal image in mind to always keep it as a reference and try to use some of the colors at least that are present on the focal image. That way the whole project becomes uh, really cohesive and uh, looks really good. By the way, I hope you noticed the, the focal image which I'm talking about from the start of my video. If not, you will see it uh, soon enough, don't worry. Anyway, the colors that I have been using is this uh, deep brown, which I used at the start, a little bit of red, blue, and even just a touch of purple later on. You can see these colors are so easy to blend with just your finger, really, really easy to work with. Of course, you don't have to use your finger, there are other ways, more artsy ways, I guess, to use uh, your oil pastels. But honestly, this is a new medium for me, so it is a learning curve. And I will also watch some tutorials to learn more and perhaps apply those that knowledge in some of the future projects. So stay with me and let's learn together. Anyway, you can see how this age distressed look is uh, progressing. I think it looks uh, really good. It will go with the, well, with the Lady Vagabond style. But also you might notice that um, you can still see my rice paper, but of course the main part of design was covered. I felt a bit sorry for that, because it is a really beautiful, beautiful rice paper. But still I think, particularly when you look this page in uh, real life, it still adds to the background interest and uh, gives it a little bit of a touch to look more special and more interesting. Anyway, here, as you can see, I was just uh, playing with my new toy, enjoying the process, relaxing. And if you manage to enjoy the process, as I always say, I am sure you will enjoy the end result as well.
Now to frame my page a bit, I am using a black color just to the very edge of my paper. At some point you might notice I try to do a little touch uh, somewhere randomly in the middle of the page, but I will give up on that because I think it's actually most important to darken those edges as that pulls the viewer's eye more to the focal image. Now I will use a gold oil pastel just for some little bonus effect and mostly I will use it over these uh, textured parts because just look how pretty this is. <laughs> and I didn't want those white parts to stand out that white so it really helped with that as well. And this is a time when I had to stop adding anything anymore. Here is how my background looks. I think it's really pretty. Really nice grungy effect. Now here is the Stamperia paper that I talked about. I cut out these girls, two girls. Here I'm just trying to decide which one I'm going to use, but uh, base colors on them are same, so either one would have fit to my background. No, this time I decided to go with this one. From these uh, Lady Vagabond collectibles, I will cut out a couple of more elements to build my composition. Here you can see the elements that I have chosen and I will adhere them, some using uh, paper glue, while the Lady Vagabond I will adhere using foam tape. And now time for some more extra touches. I will use these brads, as I had an idea that this uh, sentiment looks like it was, um, I don't know, like hammered, like a poster to a wall, I don't know, something like that. So I will put four brands each uh, on one corner of this uh, paper, but uh, I will also add it on a few more places, as you will see very soon. These kind of touches uh, really contribute to the whole feel of the page. You know, usually when uh, someone comes to look through my art journals, they always like to touch these little elements which uh, pop up. And usually they are, when they ask, how did you do this? With what did you do this? And of course, I always take some joy in explaining those little details. As you saw, for adhering the sentiment I use a foam tape, same as for the cat and the girl. But now one last little touch. These beautiful enamel dots are from Prima and I will adhere a couple of them. Here what happened is that the gem itself got separated for, from the sticky tape that is uh, together with it. So I'm adhering the sticky tape and now I will separately adhere the gem. Of course, uh, you can always use a special glue for that. 
And then one gem is never enough, right? I just had to add a couple of more. One more on the belt and one on the bag. And actually I really really like how they look. They blended in somehow so well. Goes without saying that uh, off camera, after adhering these three gems, I was still looking for some more spots to adhere um, some more gems, but I managed to resist. And one final uh, touch. As you remember, in the background, I put a little bit of this gold oil pastel over the textured areas, but I thought it would look nice some on the girl too. Because just look how, how pretty the effect is that. Who can resist that? So I placed it over these uh, whiter areas because that's where I felt like it uh, gives the best effect. And that's about it. I hope you enjoyed my process, my experimenting, my mistakes. And I hope that you learned something from it and got inspired from it. So have a nice crafty day and see you soon. Bye!